welcome to Monday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic. I hope you're all staying well. Um, we're continuing our schedule of two videos a day, and Mark is going to be back later on tonight with some sort of star battle Sudoku hybrid puzzle, which sounds very interesting. A um, couple of things to mention. Uh, if you haven't watched the videos that we've, reduced, we've released over the last couple of days, there are two that I really would recommend. Um, yesterday's video which we titled The Miracle Sudoku in which I thought Mark was trolling me when he sent a puzzle that had only had two given digits is is something else. I mean you really should watch it. The puzzle by Mitchell Lee is a work of sublime genius um, and yeah it's been getting some very nice comments so do check that out. The other video is our celebration video for 150,000 subscribers which we released over the weekend and um, you know, that's just a short mashup of some of the funny comments and uh, interesting things that we've seen on the channel over the over the last three years. And yeah, it's quite an emotional watch and also been getting some lovely comments. So I think what either of those two videos or indeed both are well worth um, well worth some time. Um, now, what have we got for you in this video today? Well, this is a puzzle by a new compiler for Cracking the Cryptic, Martin Regan. And he, he sent me an email a while ago and then published this puzzle on Logic Masters Germany where it is trotting along with a 98% rating. So this is a seriously fun puzzle and only three stars out of five for difficulty. So it should be quite approachable. And it's featuring one of our most popular, I suppose, Sudoku variants. So we've got a sandwich Sudoku variant for you today, um, which is, I suppose, uh, sandwich Sudoku was one of the reasons the this channel grew in the first place is that we were the first people who sort of picked up on it and said this is a really good puzzle and eventually it led to us releasing an app which has been very popular as well so definitely recommend checking this out let me read you the rules normal sudoku rules apply numbers outside the grid refer to the sum of cells sandwiched between digits a and b in that row or column a and b are not given and need to be deduced Two of the three shaded tetris shapes contain the same distinct digits. The other tetris shape contains a different set of four distinct digits. Okay, so a couple of odd things then in this rule set. The first is, if you're used to sandwich Sudoku, this is going to turn your brain on its head because all of the <laughs> principles we've learned from sandwich Sudoku are not going to be much use here in that we don't know what the crust of the sandwich are. We're going to have to work out what those digits are. Now, apparently, according to our testers, um, the digits are used consistently. So if we found out that one and two were the sandwich clues in this 15 clue, then one and two would be used throughout the puzzle as the crust of the sandwich. So that's one of the things to bear in mind. And in the Tetra shapes, the way I understand that is that we have to identify two of these shapes that can contain the same four digits. So let's say we decided it was these two that had the same four digits in them. Then whatever those digits were, this shape would have to have completely different digits. So that is also going on. All right, well, the best thing to do I recommend is to click on the link under the video to play the puzzle and with that I'm gonna have a go and let's get cracking um, okay well there's what there's one clue here that stands out to me like a sore thumb this 39 now why is this interesting well the reason it's interesting is that it's bigger than any sandwich clue that you'd see in an ordinary sandwich Sudoku in ordinary sandwich Sudoku the maximum clue you could have would be 35 and that's because it's this old chestnut of the number 45. If we look at a column of a Sudoku, we know it will contain all of the digits from one to nine. If you add those digits up, you get 45. So if you imagine that we had a sandwich clue with a 35 total, then, oh my goodness, um, I'm going crazy. Let's have a one there and a nine there, for example. What would be the maximum we could put between the 1 and the 9? Well, it's going to be 45 minus 1 minus 9. That's 35. So once we get into the territory like 39, we have to start thinking again. It's clear that 1 and 9 are not 
the crusts of the sandwich. Um, so, right, Leah, the way to think about this, I guess, is to think that we must have digits totaling six that form the crusts of the sandwich and any cells outside the sandwich sum. And six is an interesting number, isn't it? Because six, of course, could be one plus two plus three. So either we've got a situation where we've got two of the digits, one, two, and three, forming the crusts of the sandwich and then the other digit outside the sum. So that could look like this, for example, that would be a permissible arrangement. And then these six cells here would sum to 39. Or we've got a simpler situation where we've just got two crusts summing to six. So they would have to be two, four and one, five. We could do it like that. That would also work, wouldn't it? Ah, now, hang on, I've spotted something. Look, we have one and five already in this row. Well, that's interesting, isn't it? Especially with the 12 clue. So there's no way we can make those six cells sum to 12. So we know that one and five are not the crusts of the sandwich in this puzzle. Therefore, therefore, we know the crusts of the sandwich are either two and four or some perm of one, two, and three. Well, hmm. so there's gonna to have to be a two down here, therefore. In fact, the two must be in one of those two squares. We don't yet know whether the two is the crust or it's outside the sum, but we know the two can't go here because if it does, even if I put the one and three right at the top there, I've got two more cells outside the sandwich sum there. And I could put a one and a three in one of them. The other one would have to be a minimum of a four. And then this clue is broken because I'd have 10 outside the sum in effect. And I'd have only a maximum of 35 I could put inside it. So we know there's a two down there. Ah, now there's a one clue, right, okay, right. So. This, this is going to be very helpful because now we know that if there is a, in this row somewhere, we're gonna have this sort of arrangement. Uh, actually, that's a very bad box to choose. Let's choose this box. So we're gonna have two, one, four, something like that with two and four acting as the, the crusts of the sandwich. Now, that being the case, we now know that one is never a sandwich crust. So in this column, if we're looking at three cells making up the sandwich crust in the outie, then we know that one is the outie. We also know now, I guess, that two is undoubtedly a crust. That's important. So two is a crust and it's either a crust with a three or a four. And can we do anything with that? We probably can, but I'm not quite seeing how to do it quickly. Right, so, but now what we can do, now we've established that two is a crust, we can start to do some highlighting. So I'm gonna to totally ignore the Tetris shapes at this point, and I'm gonna highlight in green cells that cannot be sandwich crusts. So if we look at the 13 here, 13 must be at least a two cell clue. So we can do that. 12 must be a two cell clue. So we can do that. Well, and that's, that's instantly helpful, isn't it? Because now one of these squares, well, can we have a sandwich crust here? That's the question. And we can't, because that would have two outies. So this must be a sandwich crust. It must be a three or a four. All right, I'm going to label sandwich crusts in red. And if it's a four, this will be a two. If it's a three, this will be a two and this will be a one. So this square is either a one or a two. And none of those squares can be sandwich crusts. And none of those squares can be sandwich crusts. 
and uh, sorry let me just stare at this for a moment or two the 13 that's that's a little bit restricted I mean we've got a two and a three or a four as the crust so we are how how many digits could we use up with a 13 clue one th I don't think it's that many it's, I certainly don't think it can. We definitely know those two squares at least. Can't possibly be sandwich crusts. Two, three, two, seven. What else can we see? 32 clue here. So this clue is greater than 32. So let's say it's 33. If it's 33, and then we know we're adding to that either, ah, ah, this eight, this eight is important. That's very nice indeed, isn't it? Okay, right, we need to focus on this row. So we know that the sandwich crusts either sum to six or to five. Therefore, if we think about this clue and make it 33, and we add the minimum we can to that, that would be five, we'd get 38. Now that means the maximum, the absolute maximum uh, digit that we could have outside the sandwich sum in this row is a seven. Because 45 minus 38 is seven. Therefore, this eight is inside the sandwich. Therefore, this square is a two, three, or a four. And 32 must be at least, well, actually, it must be at least five cells, nine, eight, seven, and six, only adding to 30. So we can color all those squares in. Two must be in one of those two squares, mustn't it? Because this two and this two, and the fact this can't be a two now. 13. Uh, right, so what else can we see? This 11 clue, that's a little bit interesting. That must be at least two cells. One we know is not a crust, so we can put that one in green as well. Just stare at this for another few seconds and try and spot something else. Obviously, the seven can't be a sandwich or a crust of the sandwich. It's interesting to note that the setter has left out this clue and this clue, isn't it? They would be very helpful now in terms of disambiguating what's going on in the central column in row four. Ah. Now, let's look at row seven. Ah, this is very, <laughs> yeah, this is important because where does the one go in row seven? Well, it can't go in either of those squares. And if I put it here, if this is a one, I have to surround it in crusts of the sandwich, i.e. it's got to be surrounded by numbers two and then three or a four. And it wouldn't be, it would be surrounded by a seven. So, what does that mean? Well, it means none of those squares can possibly be a one. Therefore, none of those squares can actually be sandwich clues either. So, we fix those two as being crusts of the sandwich. Place the one in the middle. Ones must be up there. One of these squares is a two. And... Right, okay. So, and we can color in all of that 15 must be two cells 16 must be well it must be three cells because one can't be in the sandwich now can we go further than that we may be able to let me just again take another stare at this for a second so one is in the bottom row down here which is quite meaningful I think oh hang on 
24 clue now. 24 must be at least three cells. 7, 8, 9 out to 24. So if this is not, if that was green, there isn't enough room now to place uh, the 24 inside the sandwich. The furthest we could make the crust would be those two. That's only two cells between them. So this is also uh, a sandwich clue or sandwich crust. This one therefore can't be because it must be three. And if this can't be the two, the two moves up there. This this must be a clue now. So that, oh, that's huge. Because now we've identified the two crusts in this row. We must place seven, eight, and nine between them. That one can't be a seven. The 32 clue now is forced because, because we've been diligent about identifying cells that can't be in the sandwich. The only cell that can be in this row is that one. And that's going to allow us to place green cells in all of those as well, look. You know, this square is a two, three, or a four. Still, I, I mean, I really should have been able to disambiguate the whether this is a three or a four. That's probably the first step you're meant to do in this puzzle. I've been not able to see how to do that yet. Um, now, let's have a look. So, this is, yeah, this, this, this column is important because the 15 clue, there's no way this cell can be a crust of a sandwich and we have five cells adding up to 15 where one of them is a seven. So this square must be a crust, that one must be a one. You can shade that one in green therefore. Just don't, we don't know anything about this row which is a bit upsetting. That one's green as well. This means that that one. So now one of these two cells is crust. So it would be really helpful. This, this cell in fact is interesting. Let's just have a quick look at this cell here. Because if this was the crust of a sandwich, it would have to be a four because it can't be a two and it can't be a three. So if this was a four, that is seriously restricting these cells here, look. Now, is that restricting them in a way that is profitable? Because these two would add up to four, these two would have to add up to 12 without using three, nine or four, seven. They would have to be five and seven. You can see what the order would have to be. Five and seven. Ah, and that breaks because if there's a five here, what happens in this box? Five, five, I'd have to put a five here. We know five is not is not a crust of the sandwich. So that is not right. This square is not a four and therefore it can't be a crust. And therefore this square must be a crust and it's a three. And now we're gonna cook with gas because all of a sudden that's a three, the two. So we, we are in a situation where we have three cells adding to six. So the two is a crust. This must be a one. Yeah, this is gonna this is gonna go now. We're gonna get some progress, I think. Um, so there must be a three in this square now to complete this row. These have to add up to twelve. They can't use three, nine, five, seven. So it must be four, eight. There's an eight here. This is an eight. This is a four. There's an eight down in one of those two squares. Um, this square can't be a th 3 and therefore must be a 2. We know it can't be a 4 anymore. That's a 3. This is a 2. This is a 3. So there's a 3 in one of those... T ah, there's a 3 in one of these two squares, but there's a 12 clue and a 6 clue here. So we can't possibly have a 3 there, because that would require a 0 clue here. So the 3 must be here. 
Ah, and we can do more now. This six clue. Um, so if we ha were trying to make a two cell sandwich, adding up to six, we'd have to use one five or two four, both of which are impossible if we have a two there, because we have a one here and a two here already. So we know in fact that this square is a two, we have a six on its own. Let's put that in, that cell turns green. This must be a two. This must be a two. This must be a two, this is a three. And we've just, I think, got to fill in the three down here and the three in this one as well. So three is in one of those two cells and in this box, three is in one of those two cells. Ah, but there's a trick we can do. If we try and make the three here, we now have to make three cells add up to 12 without using one, without using two, and without using three. Well, four, five, and six add up to 15. So that's just impossible. This square must be the three, that disambiguates that one. And we have placed all of the crusts of our sandwich. And in fact, look here, we've got a 12 clue. We can't use three, nine, or five, seven. So again, we have four, eight inside the sandwich. We need five and nine to complete the box. Ah, now, 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 what have we got here? So we've got a two in this box and neither of these two boxes can contain the number two. So these two must be the ones that share the same digits. And look, we can actually, we know what digits they are. They've got to be one, five, six, and nine to complete this this row. So these cells have got to be one, five, six, nine. And this what one, five, nine along here already. So that's a six. I think I think this is what I'm meant to do, isn't it? Um, five, nine. So these squares have got to be four and eight. You can see we know the order now. That's eight. That's four. That's not eight anymore. These squares have got to be five, seven, and nine in some order. Let's just highlight that and move on. Um, there's no one in those squares. There's a one in one of those two, one in one of these two, five, nine. We've already got nines in there, look, so those can't be nine, which places the nine. and means these two have to be four and six put those in and right now we let's take stock again and have it so we've used this clue this clue and this clue and this clue we've not used this clue yet but the, the fact is that that's completely open I think so we're not probably going to have to focus here we've used this clue we've not used this ah 15 clue three cells without using a one, two, and a three. We've looked at that already. That's four, five, and six. That can't be four. So this may, that's a four by normal Sudoku. So now I think we've used all the clues on the right-hand side. Now we've got an 11 clue here. Um, now, can we detect which way round that goes? Probably can, but I can't quite see how to do it. I can see two and three are ruled out. Like four, seven, or five, six. Both look like they're still possible. So let's move on to the 13 clue. Um, that's now got to contain a one, and we've got ones here and here, so this square must be a one. These two have to add up to 12 without using three nines. So we're looking at four, eight, which is possible, I think, or five, seven, uh, not sure. Four, eight, five, seven. And the 39 clue we've used, the 16 clue we've not used, and it's got a one in it. So these have to add up to 15. So this can't be a seven. So this has to be six or seven, this clue here. Uh, and oh, oh yeah, we've got 15 again, look. 
without using 1, 2 and 3. So this is 4, 5 and 6 again. So that place is 8 and 9 at the bottom. There's an 8 in there already, so we can do that. 8, that must resolve in that way. Uh, the 5 here fixes that this is a 7. That must be a 6 by just Sudoku. That fixes that as a 7, makes that an 8. Look, that's a 9, that's a 7 now. That can't be a 9. This must be a 9 to complete the box. So that's not a 9. In fact, that must be a 6 because it also can't be a 5. And there must be an 8 in this square. So this is a 5 or a 9 and it can't be a 5. So that's great. We get that, that, that and that all sorted out. Coming down this we need a 4 to complete this and we need, what's that, a 7 to complete the column. So, so far it looks like it's working. What an interesting puzzle isn't it? So now that's a 7. Ah, now remember we had the 11 clue. So now we know this is 5 and 6 into these squares. So this 4 must shift downwards. 5 and 6, so this must be 9, this must be 5. There's a 5 in here, so this must be 6, 5 in this order. That fixes the 6 there. That's not 4 or 5 anymore. Um, we need 6, 7 and 8. Ah, the 7 must be in there. Because we've got the 7s here and here. These two squares are 6 and 8. These two squares are 1 and 9. And we can disambiguate that very nicely. That's going to be a 7 now. Oh, we've got the 13 clue, have we? Oh, I was about to think I've made a mistake then because I'm so used to looking at ones and nines. I looked at this one and I was like, oh no, but actually the one helps. I need a five. <laughs> um, good. So that's a four, that's a six, that's a five. That should be an eight. That fixes the eight and the six. That fixes the eight and the four. That fixes the four and the five. 9 and 5 are fixed at the bottom. And if we've not made a mistake, we're looking at 4 and 6 into those clues. So let's go with that. There we go. Lovely puzzle. Martin, I hope you enjoyed watching me solve your puzzle. I thought that was very, very nice indeed. Uh, something a little bit different, a good twist on the classic sandwich Sudoku. Um, yeah, and thanks for watching. And uh, We'll be back later with another edition of Cracking the Cryptic.